The next basic tissue type that we will talk about is connective tissue. So connective tissue is one of the most abundant tissue that vary widely in appearance and function, which is very different with epithelial tissue. Connective tissue occurs throughout the body, so it's widely distributed. They are never exposed to the outside environment. And the reason being is because superficial to connective tissue is epithelial tissue, the exposed tissue. Now, as far as vascularity is concerned, remember when I mentioned vascularity with epithelial tissue, that means essentially do they have blood vessels? When it comes to connective tissue, connective tissue tends to have lots of blood vessels, all right? So they are said to be highly vascularized. Now, there are exceptions. It just depends upon the type of connective tissue. So for example, when we say a vascular, just like we did with epithelial tissue, because we know epithelial tissue is a vascular, well, it turns out that there's a type of connective tissue that is also a vascular. And that type of epithelial tissue is cartilage, all right? So whenever you hear the word cartilage, I need you to think it's a type of connective tissue that is a vascular. All right. Now, there are also other types of connective tissue that will have limited blood vessels. So they're not highly vascularized, but they're not avascular either. So the term limited vascularity means they have blood vessels, but not highly vascularized, right? So they do have some blood vessels. So examples of connective tissue that is said to have limited vascularity are your tendons and ligaments. Now, as far as the functions of connective tissue, they establish a structural framework for the body, as you'll see later. They transport fluids and dissolve material. They protect and insulate delicate organs. They support, surround, and interconnect other types of tissue. They store energy reserves in the form of triglycerides. So if you recall, triglycerides are basically one type of lipid, and this is how our fat cells, this is how our body stores fat in the form of triglycerides. They also defend the body from invading microorganisms, all right? So it's the main source of our immunity, our immune response. Connective tissue also compartmentalizes structures. You'll see this when we talk about skeletal muscle. Now, I want to make sure that we're all on the same page. Skeletal muscle, ladies and gentlemen, is not connective tissue. We know that skeletal muscle or muscle is basically another basic tissue type. All right. So what this is just essentially saying is that it compartmentalizes skeletal muscle, something that you'll see when we get to the skeletal system. All right, one of the organ systems that we're going to be looking at in 2, 2, 3. Now, despite the fact that they vary widely in appearance and function, they do share some common basic components, one of which they contain specialized cells. Okay, so we'll look at that in the next slide. They also contain extracellular matrix. So what exactly is extracellular matrix? Well, they consist of three parts. We have our ground substance, we have our connective tissue fibers, and we have what's called the extracellular adhesion molecules. Incidentally, I will abbreviate connective tissue as CT, all right? So if I write CT, then I want you to think connective tissue, because clearly it's easier to write CT than to write out connective tissue. All right, now before we get into the details of connective tissue, I would like to talk about intracellular versus extracellular. So these are terminologies that I use quite frequently and also terminologies or terms that I need you to be very familiar with, okay? So let's begin with intracellular. So whenever you hear the word intracellular, I need you to think inside the cell, okay? So intracellular means inside the cell. So a good example of intracellular is the cytosol. Right? What else do we have intracellularly? Well, how about our organelles, such as the nucleus? That is intracellular. Okay? Now, there's also a term extracellular. So whenever you hear the word extracellular, I need you to think outside of the cell. Okay? Outside of the cell. 
So there are two examples of extracellular. Number one is interstitial fluid. Right? So let's talk about interstitial fluid. Interstitial fluid is what surrounds our cells. So these round things that I drew are our cells. All right. So these are our body cells. So surrounding that, that I highlighted in green, is the interstitial fluid. All right. Another example of extracellular fluid is intravascular. In other words, blood. All right. We'll just say blood. But really, if we really wanted to be specific, we would say plasma of blood. But for us, we'll just say blood. So basically, this is what we find inside our blood vessel. All right. So intravascular just basically means blood. This is what we find inside the blood vessel. So clearly, both interstitial fluid and intravascular are outside of the cell. So remember, interstitial fluid is what's surrounding our tissue cells, all right, or our body cells, and intravascular is what's inside the blood vessel. Now we have two images here that shows us one type of connective tissue. So the type of connective tissue that is illustrated in this image is areolar connective tissue. So we will talk about what areolar connective tissue is and how it's classified later. This image over here is also another image of areolar connective tissue. And you'll see that areolar connective tissue is quite extensive, right? We find it practically everywhere. All right, so let's now look at the next slide. So what this slide is showing us are some of the specialized stuff that we have. Now, is this the comprehensive list? In other words, is this it? The answer is no. But these are the ones that I need you to know. All right. So let's begin with the fibroblasts. So this is a connective tissue cell. All right. So fibroblasts are the most abundant cell type. They tend to be large with branching processes, sort of like an octopus, I suppose. They're practically found in all connective tissue proper. What is connective tissue proper? Well, we're going to be discussing that later on. Fibroblasts will secrete protein fibers, all right, as well as certain components of the ground substance. And of course, we'll talk about what these protein fibers are, as well as the components of the ground substance later on. All right. We also have what are called fibrocytes. So fibrocytes are the second most abundant cell type. It too is found in all connective tissue proper. So their job is to maintain the fibers of connective tissue proper. Once again, what these fibers are, we'll talk about that as well. Now note, the fibroblast and the fibrocyte are one and the same cell. So in other words, when a fibroblast or when a cell is called a fibroblast, I want you to think a more active form. Okay, that means it's secreting stuff. And again, it's going to secrete these protein fibers as well as certain components of the ground substance. Don't worry, we're going to talk about it. When it becomes a fibrocyte, what that means, it's not as active of a cell. In other words, it's not as active when it was once a fibroblast. So what is it doing? Why is it a fibroblast, fibrocyte and not a fibroblast? It's because when it becomes a fibrocyte, its responsibility is maintenance, all right? Not secretion. It's there to maintain, to make sure things are the way they should be, all right? So fibroblasts, once again, are the more active form. That means it's actively secreting stuff. And when it's done, then it becomes a fibrocyte. And that's all about maintenance. It's just making sure that things are the way they should be. The second type of connective tissue cell are the adipocytes. So these are commonly known as your fat cell. So each adipocyte will store a single large fat droplet. All right. So this fat droplet will contain triglycerides. This is how we store fat. So if the triglyceride contents in the fat droplet increases, then the adipocyte as a whole will increase in size as well. And that leads essentially to, to us getting fat. So triglyceride, again, is what we find inside this fat droplet that each adipocyte will have. Another connective tissue cell 
are the mesenchymal cells. Now, some people pronounce it as mesenchymal cells. I say either one. So regardless of you say mesenchymal or mesenchymal cell, your takeaway, ladies and gentlemen, these are stem cells, all right? These are stem cells. Specifically, they are connective tissue stem cells. So that way, just to make sure we're absolutely clear, I'm going to put CT. So there's no mistaking that we are talking about connective tissue stem cells. Ladies and gentlemen, this is our source of these connective tissue cells. All right? They will differentiate into fibroblasts and chondroblasts, and as well as the cells that we find in blood. And we'll talk about that when we look at the illustration that I did to the right. Another cell type, connective tissue cell type, are the mast cells. So mast cells stimulate inflammation after injury or an infection. So what they release, ladies and gentlemen, is histamine and heparin. Histamine is an, is an inflammatory agent. In other words, it causes inflammation. So basically the swelling that you sometimes see. Heparin is an anticoagulant. So what does an anticoagulant mean? What that means is that it prevents the formation of a blood clot. Okay, so anticoagulant basically means it prevents the formation of a blood clot. So what I'll do is I'll write blood clot and I'll put an X like this. Just to emphasize the fact that heparin, which is an anticoagulant, will prevent the formation of a blood clot. All right, what else? are these specialized connective tissue cell populations? Well, the leukocytes. So your leukocytes are commonly known as your white blood cells, all right? So these are cells of our immune system, of immunity. This is what protects us. This is what helps us getting to get better if we get sick, for example. And there are many different types of leukocytes, which I'm not really expecting you to know right now. So an example of a leukocytes are these macrophages, right? macrophages. And these guys are large. They're amoeba-like. They're vital to our immunity, all right, to keep, uh, to, to help us get better if we get sick, for example. What they are are phagocytes, right? So what exactly are phagocytes? So if you remember back in 189, you talked about phagocytosis, where cells that undergo phagocytosis can engulf whole things, all right? through the process, once again, called phagocytosis. So if they're able to do that, then they're referred to as phagocytes. And this is what these macrophages are, right? They're phagocytes. So I have an illustration that I made over here. And basically what this is meant to show is here is your phagocyte. Again, macrophages are phagocytes. And here's a bacterium. So literally, this phagocyte, this macrophage, will engulf that whole bacterium. Now, these macrophages, these phagocytes, are basically either fixed or free. So what does that mean? When you see fixed macrophages, that means they stay in the tissue. That means they stay put. They don't wander all over the place. If you see free macrophages, then they, they freely move. They migrate all over. All right, so basically just the, the, the term fixed versus free just depends upon do they move around from tissue to tissue or do they stay put? It's, it's as simple as that. Okay, now what I've done here is to show you the differentiation of the various connective tissue cells. And it all boils down to, ladies and gentlemen, with the mesenchymal cell, sometimes called the mesenchyme. Once again, these are connective tissue stem cells. All right, so in connective tissue proper, which again we'll talk about, we begin with the fibroblast, right? So in connective tissue proper, we're going to find a lot of fibroblast. And as I said before, if it's actively secreting stuff, what that stuff are, to be discussed later, then when they're done, they become a fibrocyte, okay? Now remember, the fibroblast basically stems from this mesenchymal cells. All right, now in cartilage, these mesenchymal cells, connective tissue stem cells, 
can differentiate into the chondroblast, okay? The chondroblast actively secretes cartilage, and when they're done, they become a chondrocyte. So once again, this is just emphasizing the fact that the blast form tend to be the more active form, and the site form tends to be the more quiet form. They're about maintenance, to making sure that things are the way they should be. All right. Now, the mesenchymal cells can also differentiate into the osteoblast, and this is found in bone. So osteoblasts are actively secreting bone, and when they're done, guess what they become? An osteocyte. Okay, so there's a consistent pattern I hope that you're seeing. All right, now, the mesenchymal cell can also differentiate into what we call a hematopoietic stem cell. So this is a big word. Hematopoietic stem cell, which we can also refer to as a hemocytoblast, okay? Now, this has to do with blood. Now, this hemocytoblast, also known as hematopoietic stem cell, can differentiate into the various cells found in blood. So, for example, a hemocytoblast can become our white blood cells, which again are commonly, which are officially known as leukocytes. A hemocytoblast can differentiate into our red blood cells, our erythrocytes, and as well as platelets. So this overall picture shows us the different types of connective tissue, right? So your connective tissue proper is connective tissue. Cartilage is connective tissue. Bone is connective tissue. Blood is connective tissue. Why? Because, ladies and gentlemen, they all start off at being a mesenchymal or a mesenchyme cell. The stem cell is the same. And that's why these all these different types that you're seeing there, connective tissue proper, cartilage, bone, and blood, are all classified as connective tissue. Now, I think we all agree, bone looks nothing like blood. Blood looks nothing like cartilage. They look very different from each other. And this goes back to the fact that I was saying earlier that connective tissue vary widely in appearance and function.